Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Pray that everyone is doing well. I'm going to give it a couple more seconds and we're going to jump on in. Good morning, Shannon. See some people coming in. Going to give it a couple more seconds and we're going to begin. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor Wright. Good morning, good morning. Couple more seconds. Good morning, Cousin April. Good morning. Couple more seconds and we're jumping in. Good morning, Minister Carpenter. Thank you all for coming in. Good morning, good morning. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. This is Elder Melvina Carpenter with True Light Healing and Deliverance Ministries based out of Goose Creek, South Carolina, where my pastor is none other than uh, Pastor Melvin Wright, along with Evangelist Kathy Wright. We also pay homage to our sister churches, uh, Rock of Truth Ministries in North Charleston, South Carolina along, uh, I'm sorry, with Bishop Ronald Anderson, Lady Shirley Anderson. Good morning, Kimberly Flood. Good morning, Shonda Wright. Uh, also, Pastor Aletha Scott Mallory of You Hope Ministries in Atlanta, Georgia. Kingdom Citizens with Pastor James Ben in Liberia. We thank the Lord for them. We thank the Lord for you, 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 and you being on this morning. Our topic is stop worrying. Listen, I need you to hit the like button and hit the share. Let someone else come in and watch the broadcast along with us and get this word. God bless you, Chloe Thomas. Uh, we're coming this morning from Matthew chapter six, Matthew chapter six, beginning at verses 31 through 34. Topic is stop worrying. If you know of someone who needs to hear this message on this morning, go ahead and hit that share button, hit the share button, share the gospel with someone else. Matthew chapter six, beginning at verse 31 reads, therefore, do not be anxious saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them all. Verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. I like some versions that says tomorrow has enough problems of its own. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. This is the ESV version. Topic on this morning is stop worrying. Uh, the famous Joyce Myers once said that worrying is like sitting in a rocking chair. You are constantly moving, but you're not going anywhere. Worrying is not a benefit to you. Worry, worry causes stress. Worry causes health problems. Worry causes you to not be at peace with God or yourself. Worry is the, worry is the answer for not praying. When you don't pray, worry becomes your case. When we are in the face of the Lord and we are seeking the Lord and, and we are going before him with our concerns, not worries, with our concerns, he brings a peace about us that other people won't understand, won't comprehend, but we get it. Because our trust and our faith in him elevates beyond the level of worry, beyond the dimension of worry. Worry is at the bottom of the totem pole, okay? And when, as believers, when we are in prayer, when we are seeking the face of the Lord, I mean, on two devices, when we are seeking the face of the Lord, when we are going before him with what's bothering us, with what we're worried about, what we're fearful about, what we don't know about, and we say, Lord, I'm concerned about this, or we, we confess, Lord, I'm worried about this person, he gives us his peace, not our peace. Come on. He says, he says, I give you my peace, not the peace that the world gives. Come on. Cause the world can take their peace away. But when you go before the Lord with your concerns, with your trouble, 
He gives you the answers. He gives you joy. He gives you peace. And this is why he says for us to seek ye first the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God sums up the peace, the joy, and the sovereignty of the Lord. God is sovereign. Nothing can happen that he does not allow. He does give us free will. He gives us choices, but nothing happens that catches him by surprise and nothing happens that he does not allow. And in what we have to do is make up in our mind to stop worrying. Worrying is not going to change anything. Worrying is not going to help you. Worrying is not going to make you feel better. It's going to make you feel worse. You've got to trust that when you go before the Lord and you are doing everything that you are supposed to do, come on, you are reading your word. You are giving, you are praying. You are being kind to people. You are praying for people. You are putting your flesh on the back burner and you are putting him up front when you are doing everything that you can to benefit the kingdom, to represent the kingdom well. You have to know that God is going to take care of you. He says, you don't need to worry about what you're going to eat or drink on tomorrow. If, if God takes care of the sparrows, surely he will take care of you. Come on. I, I sung the song as a teenager and a young adult. Why should I feel discouraged? discouraged. There's no need for you to be discouraged. If, do you look outside? Do you see the birds flying around in your yard? They have no care. They have no concern. Them jokers not worried about nothing. They, they've never uttered a prayer. They, they've never gotten on their knees. They've never spoken in tongues. They never reached up under their wing and, and sold a dollar into nobody's church. But they're outside flying around my tree in my bushes right now. And they are out there singing and loud because they know that God is going to take care of them. And mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, you better know that God is going to take care of you and your situation. You have no need to worry. But we worry because we allow fear to step in. And what did Timothy say? God has not given you. Come on. He has not given you. He didn't put it in a box and put a, wrap it up and put a big bow on it. God has not given you the spirit of fear. But what did he give you? He gave you love. He gave you power and a stable mind, a sound mind. We have to use that to our advantage. I was going to go live on this week. And the next time I walk, Charlie, I might do it. When I walk Charlie in the neighborhood, all of a sudden, all the dogs want to put their head through the gate because they see another dog and they are barking. And sometimes the bark scares me. But Charlie, with his little prissy self, Charlie don't even look around to see where the noise is coming from. He just, that's how he walks. He walks like a rabbit, just, just bouncing. Like, my mama's with me and she not going to let y'all hurt me. I'm good. Charlie just keeps walking like whatever. One, one dog came charging at us this week and the owners had to call them back. Y'all, Charlie never barked at the dog. He never tried to go after the dog. He didn't even look. He just kept moving. That's how we got to be. You've got to know that in this walk, when you are walking, when you are walking in the spirit, that your master, because dogs sees their owners as their masters. And I'm not saying that you're a dog by any means. I just need you to catch the revelation, please. You have to know that your master Yah, Jehovah, the Lord, your God. Come on, El Shaddai, the Lord Almighty. Come on, he is walking with you. And I don't care how much the enemy barks. I don't care how many bills bark. I don't care how many doctors uh, reviews bark at you. I don't care how much your husband, your children, your job, your neighbor, your friend, your boyfriend, your baby mama, your baby daddy. I don't care how much they are barking. You better keep on walking like you don't hear nothing. Let me tell you something. Charlie didn't even pause to say where that noise coming from. Charlie was just enjoying the breeze. His hair's flying in the wind. And he just, and I'm holding his, uh, his leash, but I'm like, hold up. Do I need to run? Do I need to pull my hoodie up for a minute so I can pick him up and take off? 
Charlie had not a care. You better live this life like you know who is walking with you. Lakeisha McCray, you better keep walking. You better live this life. Rashika, keep walking, baby. You better live this life like you know who is walking with you. And God has us on a leash. Come on. I am his puppet on the street. Maybe you don't want to admit that, but I am his puppet on the street. Come on. He can pull me and push me wherever he wants to because he is my master and I worship and I serve him. I serve Jehovah. I serve the Lord of Lord. I serve the King of Kings. No one is above him, but everyone is below him. Are you hearing me? So I take no thought of what tomorrow's going to bring. I take no thought of what later today is going to bring. Why? Because I know who's walking with me. You can't see him. I can't see him, but I know that he's there. You can't see air, but you know that you're breathing. I know that God is taking care of me. I know that God is taking care of my children. He's taking care of my husband, my parents, my siblings, my nieces, nephews, my friends. He's taking care of you. And I know it sometimes it feels like you want to sit back and say, Lord, you here? Jesus, you in the room? Because I, I don't see you right now and I definitely don't feel you. But when you don't feel him, that's when you better know that his angels are encamped all around you. Come on. You got 10,000 on your right and you got 10,000 on your left and they will not let you fall. They will not let your feet slip. They will not let your feet slip. Come on, Psalms 91. They'll hold you up so you don't dash your foot against a stone. I dwell in the secret place. That's where I reside. I changed my address a long time ago. I reside in the secret place of the most high God. I will say of the Lord, he is my fortress and my strength. My God in him will I trust. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing shall bother me by day or night. My God's got me. He's got you. What are you worrying about? Well, one day this week, I, I was slow in the salon, and so I went Christmas shopping. And the, the store that I went in to support is, is an African-American owner. We were talking about business, and I was telling her how many people have reached out to me saying, you know, I don't know, I'm kind of considering shutting it down. And I'm like, back in the day, I would be like, man, I only got one client today. This is a bummer. I'm sad. I don't want to talk about it. Now, when I have a slow day, I take that day as God wanting me to rest. God wants to talk to me. God wants to spend time with me. I need to clean my house. I need to update my records. I need to do my administration work for my business, for my church. There's something that I need to do versus being behind the chair right now. So let me take advantage of that time. Maybe taking advantage of that time is sitting on my couch and putting my feet up so my feet can rest and not swell and I can be okay. Maybe I need to rest my mind and walk, watch Hallmark Channel today and that's what the Lord wants me to do. Don't you know that the Lord doesn't want you stressed out? He doesn't want you always moving always busy. He wants you to sit back and relax sometimes. And this is why so many of us are, are, so many people are ending up in the hospital with heart attacks and strokes and all this stuff because our minds are going 1 million per second. And we feel like if we're not moving, then we're null and void. We're, we're unproductive. Sometimes your productivity is doing nothing. Sometimes your productivity is going to your bathroom and running a hot bubble bath with some peppermint oil and turning on some music and laying there for 30 minutes so you can get your mind together. Come on, whether you want to pray or whether you want to listen to some jazz, that's on you. But it, take that time. Because see, worrying will cause you to be wiping off the table and there's nothing there. Worrying will make you vacuum the floor and you just did it 30 minutes ago because you become anxious. When you become anxious, you become fidgety. Come on, can I help the church? You become fidgety and you always want to be doing something. You, you can't sit and just relax because your mind is doing this. What if, what if, what if, what if, what if? Stop. Because you don't have control over the what if. God fed you yesterday. He paid the light bill last month and the month before. And when you didn't think, think that you would have the money the month before that, somehow the money came through. If he did it before, he'll do it again. He brought you through this. 
he'll bring you through that. There is no need to worry. There's no need to worry. Stop worrying. Stop, especially women. Especially women. Women worry. That's why we can't sleep. You got a husband, as soon as his head hits the pillow, out. Women, toss, toss, fix the pillow, pull the blanket off, pull the blanket on, put the put one sheet off, put the comforter on, put this back on, take that back off, toss again, breathe hard, turn the TV on, turn the TV off, get your phone, scroll on, scroll on Facebook, turn that off, put a reminder in your phone with something you forgot to do, put that back down. And two hours later, you're still not asleep because you're worrying about stuff that is beyond your control. You better be a bird. You better be like a bird. You better wake up singing. You better go to sleep singing. Because if I took this phone outside right now, you will hear them. When I go for my walks, I don't need any music. The birds are loud enough and they are beautiful because they don't worry. They know that God is going to take care of them. They know it. I have a bird feeder in my backyard, but the birds are everywhere. They're in everybody's yard. They're not worried about how they're going to eat or how they're going to drink. They know that somebody out there is looking out for them and he's going to take care for them. We know who that somebody is. He takes care of us. Next scripture. Next, next scripture. I'm almost done. Stop worrying. Stop worrying. Look at yourself and say, self, stop worrying. First Kings chapter three. First Kings chapter three, verses nine through 14. This is where Solomon had the opportunity to ask the Lord for anything. And he asked the Lord for wisdom. But I want to read to you what the Lord's response was. It says, give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people that I may discern between good and evil for who was able to govern this, your great people. The King James Version says wisdom, but this version says, give your servant an understanding mind to govern your people that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern govern this, your great people? The problem we worry so much is because our discernment is low. Solomon prayed for understanding and he prayed for discernment. When you can't discern who to trust and who to stay away from, that causes you to worry too. So you, what's, what's the little thing? Holy Spirit, activate. <laughs> you better tell your Holy Spirit to activate. You better tell your discernment to activate so that you can know, okay, well, Lord, I asked them for such and such. I don't know if they're going to go through. I don't know if they're going to come through for me like they said they would. Once you give it to God and you walk through the process, you do what he tells you to do. It's not your job to worry about how it's going to work out or how he's going to fix it. That's not your place. Stop trying to be God. Stop trying to sit on his throne. Let God be God. Let God do what he wants to do. Verse 10 says, it pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. And God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life. You hear it? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Come on and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Because you didn't ask for a long life, sorry, I lost my place, for a long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself, understanding to discern what is right. Behold, I now do according to your word. Get this, excuse me. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, this is what we need to pray over ourselves. Lord, give me a wise and discerning mind in the name of Jesus, so that none like you has been before you and none like you shall arise after you. Verse 13, here's our key scripture. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days. I'll say it again. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor. This is what the Lord is giving to you. He's giving to you what you did not even ask for, both riches and honor. The Lord will honor you with long life and show you his salvation. And he's giving you riches. 
You worrying about Christmas and that's a month away. Sis, don't worry about Christmas. Then he, you had stuff up under the tree last year, right? You gonna have stuff, un stuff up under the tree this year. Your children are gonna be happy. It's one day. It's one day. Don't break the bank for one day. Don't get in credit card debt for one day. Don't match your credit cards out for one day. It's one day. One. Proverbs 10 and 3. The Lord does not let the righteous go hungry, but he thwarts the craving of the wicked. The Lord does not let the righteous go hungry. He won't. He created you. He did not create you, create you just to destroy you. Are you hearing me? No woman goes in the kitchen and fries chicken just to drop it on the floor and destroy it unless she got something going on. Okay? Or she's trying to hurt the man that she with, so she want to fry chicken and he's hungry and she Okay, that's another story. Maybe I'm in my author mode. But that's not why God created you. He did not create you just to destroy you. He didn't create you to hurt you. He said, with long life, would I satisfy you and show you my salvation? I come. Come on. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He said, but. Come on, but changes everything. But I come. That you may have life. And that more abundantly. That's that Zoe kind of life. Life the way God has it. He's not going to let you be hungry. And this scripture is far more than food. Your bank account won't be hungry. Your heart, come on, won't be hungry. Your household won't be hungry. Whatever you need, he will provide. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. He's a faithful God. Hasn't he proven himself to you time and time again? Time and time again, God has proven to you that he will come through. He's proven himself. Why are you doubting him now? Why are you worrying now? Tell worryation to go to hell because that's where it came from. Go back to hell, worryation. You don't belong to me. You belong to Satan and his demons. Come on. But I'm a king's child. I'm not a king's kid because a king is a kid is a goat. I'm a king's child. I'm the king's child. I'm a peculiar generation. I'm a royal priesthood. Worry. When have you ever seen a king or a queen sit and worry? Their servants do everything for them. If they don't have it, they call for another king. They call for another queen. They call for another governor. Y'all come do the work. But they sit on that throne, eating their grapes, drinking their wine and their cheese. They're not worrying. You need to stop worrying. Because what you're worrying says to the Lord is, I don't trust you. When you worry, you are saying to the Lord, I don't believe that you're going to bring me through this. I don't believe you to be the God that you say you are. So I'm worried. Your power is limited, but God is limitless. Are you hearing me? He said, I will not allow the righteous. The Lord does not let the righteous go hungry. That's not what he does. My last scripture and I'm closing out. Matthews. Matthew 5 and 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. King James Version says, for they shall be filled. When you hunger and thirst for the things of God, for his righteousness, for his holiness, for his peace, for pleasing him, for being in his word, for being in prayer. Come on, you, you, you have a, an agenda every day. You wake, you wash, you brush your teeth, you pray. You dress, you make your bed, you do what you do. But your prayer time, your meditation, your reading of your word, it is in there. Before you go to bed, you're praying again. Throughout the day, you're praying again. When you are in the face of God, there's no way he's going to let you fall. But for those people who's in and out, come on. You in church today, but tomorrow you cussing. Yeah, I see why you worry. Because you need to choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. You can't speak in tongue and cuss out of the same mouth. You need to choose. 
Come on. You, you either going to be on his seat. He's taking me somewhere else. You need to be on his side or Satan's side. You going to be hot or you going to be cold. You, there's, there is no middle. You need to choose. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. He says for us to seek him first. The world is changing. People are changing. Things are changing. Things are changing. And if you sit back and you concentrate, <clears throat> excuse me, on everything that's changing around you, it'll make your heart race. But when you sit back and you take notice of what's changing, <clears throat> look at the verdict from, what is it, Rittenhouse? Did I say it right? Not guilty on all accounts. Homeboy walking around, walking around with this big old gun and nobody stops him. Because of the color of his skin. But had he been on this side, he wouldn't have made it out of the car. He wouldn't have made it past his car. The world is changing. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so that has caused us to become alarmed and afraid. But you can't become alarmed and afraid. Thank you so much. You have to trust that God is going to see you through. You have to trust that he's going to make a way for you. You have to trust that he's going to protect your daughter. He's going to protect your son. He's going to protect your husband. He's going to protect you. But guess what? That's where discernment comes in at. Yesterday, yesterday, I was at the hair salon. I was about to, to go ahead and leave. I was with my last client. Somebody rang the doorbell. If you've never been to my salon, you can't just walk in. You have to ring the doorbell. We have to let you in. I love that safety feature. And so I'm standing. My salon is all the way at the back of the hall, but I can see the front door. So I'm standing in the hallway and I'm looking at the front door. Two people of uh, another race rang the doorbell. Two, two men. If I don't know you and I'm not expecting you, I'm not opening the door for you. I don't do that. Do it at home. I'm not going to do it at work either. I'm, I'm not. I'm not expecting you. Um, so. Uh, yeah, my life comes before work. Okay, that remember the discernment that Solomon asked for? Okay, so it was two men. So someone else opened the door. It was just me, that person, and my client. The other person opened the door, and I saw them briefly ask for a haircut. And she turned to ask me, and before she could ask me, I said, no. No smile on my face, just like this, no. She said, oh, she said, no, I'm sorry. She closed the door. She said, you don't want to cut their hair? I said, no, because my discernment, see, when you have discernment and you have the Holy Ghost, you don't shy away from nothing. My Holy Ghost said trouble. Don't let them people in here. I was mad at her for even opening the door. <laughs> like, don't, mm -mm. no, ma'am. And I said to her, did you not see that verdict? We have to be on guard. Not everybody is like that, but I don't know who is or who isn't. And when, when they came to the door, my spirit said, uh-uh, don't do it. And then last night as I was sitting and talking to my husband about it, I y'all, the Holy Spirit, what does he say? He brings all things back to remembrance. April, he brings all things back to remembrance. I'm sitting there talking to my husband, and I realize them dudes already had a haircut. Y'all, that fade was fresh. You was trying to set us up for the okie doke. And I said to my client, I said, it's three women in here with these two men. If I let them in here and they do something to us, what are we going to do? But see, I trusted what God said. <laughs> I trusted what God said. And, and, and the, the, the money I would have gotten from cutting their hair, yes, I can cut their hair. Yes, I cut other races hair. I can. I just... I do women's hair for the most part, but that's not my focus today. But the money that I would have gotten from cutting their hair, I got that in tips. See, he provides. That's why I don't need to worry. That's why you need to stop worrying. You, you, trying, you trying to fix things and manipulate things to work it out this way, but God will provide for you this way. That's why you just need to sit back and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he's telling you just stand still. Didn't I already tell y'all this? Just stand still, see the salvation of the Lord. I got you. 
You don't need to worry about a thing. What you're supposed to have, y'all, you'll have. What you're supposed to do, you'll end up doing. He'll make a way. He'll pave the road for you. If he can part a whole sea, come on. He parted a whole sea. We went to Pastor Travis Green's church last, last Sunday, and he said something that just blessed me. He said, God parted the sea, and they made it out on dry land. He didn't part the sea, and they was walking on muddy ground. Come on. <laughs> You, you step on the sand and water just passed. It's muddy. There was no mud. The Bible says they made it out on dry ground. God will, excuse me, God will part the sea for you and you will make it out where there's no traces of dirt on your feet. I'm about to take off and run. <laughs> he will part. He will pave the road for you and you will walk with no dirt on your feet. Nobody will even know that you came from trouble. They'll think you've been walking in peace all this time. You need to stop worrying. You need to take it to the Lord in prayer. Cast, come on, come on, Peter. Cast your anxiety, cast your cares on him why? Because he cares for you. He cares for you. Stop worrying. I had a moment on this week. I put a post on Facebook about my brother, and I thank each and every one of you who whispered a prayer for me and, and who chimed in. I had that moment, but I didn't let that moment have me. Thoughts will come to your mind. Things will hit you. And you deal with it and you move. That's why I updated the post and said, I'm good down, y'all. I had a moment, but I'm all right. But see, there's a difference in pain and worry. I'm going to go ahead and close. There's a difference in having pain and worry. I wasn't worried about nothing. I was just having, to, I was just having some pain. In this holiday season, you may have some pain. But even in that, let God know where you are. I'm hurting right now. I'm upset right now. I'm angry right now. I need you to help me get out of this moment. I need you to get me through this. I need you to shake me. I need you to pull me out of this place because I can't stay here. You can't stay there. So you drop your tears, you wipe your eyes, and you shift your atmosphere, and you move. Have your moment, but don't let your moment have you. But don't worry. Because God's already got it under control. Don't you know that your life was already written? Your life is a book. The beginning and the end and even the middle is already is filled out. Every page, line upon line, precept upon precept. It's already been written. <laughs> it's already been written. You have nothing to worry about. Because if you turn to the very end of the page... If you turn to the very end of the page for your story, remember the Disney books? It's going to say, and they lived happily ever after. <laughs> That's what it's going to say. And they lived happily ever after. Because God's got you. And God's got me. Stop worrying. If you'd like to give today, I'm going to post the link in the comments. You can give through GiveLify. You can tithe or so. Um, I'm going to post a direct link that will take you right to the church page. I hope that this message has blessed you on today. Please hit the share button. Please share the message with someone. Somebody else needs to hear this on today. Some mother, some father, some sister, some brother, some other pastor needs to hear this message, message today to stop worrying. Regardless of our title, sometimes worry sits on our shoulders. But today, God has empowered us to knock it off. We can make it. We can get through this. I love you all. Have a blessed week. Don't forget to pray. Remember that we are praying for you and we are praying with you. Join us tomorrow morning at 5.30 a.m. for prayer. Start your day right. Stop worrying. God bless you.